It is a very valid question. Yeah. If I speak something negative, will it happen? So should I refrain from anything negative? If you live in a worldview shaped by the faith and prosperity gospel's meta narrative, surely this is what you believe. Uh, and, and I tell you, I lived in that worldview. I, I served as a minister in that worldview. And I know the power that that holds over people, that the fear uh, power of it. Like, uh, you know, somebody says, don't ever say over my dead body. Don't ever use that idiom because it will happen. It will be over your dead body. Or I was part of a prayer group or, is, you know, a uh, home group. And one lady, she said that, you know, I'm so tired. Or I'm, I'm, she even used that as an expression, like, I'm tired of this. I'm tired of politics or I'm tired of, you know, whatever. And then, you know, somebody stopped her. And she, you cannot say that. Well, I think she herself kind of found herself saying that and she stopped her and said no I'm not confessing that I'm not going to confess that I'm tired you know even as an idiom even as a metaphor you know people are very very cautious of using words and you know within the faith and prosperity gospel what you do is that you even start to you know uh, censor things and you go through you know uh, scri- uh, what do you call it lyrics to, to, to worship songs and I know people who edit them and take out what looks like negative Negative confessions because they should not be spoken because whatever you say will happen. So even anything negative, you shouldn't just speak about it. Even if you go through a, you know, if you experience something very uh, negative right now, you shouldn't put that into words. You shouldn't even speak about that because uh, it will create even worse things for you. So I think what you hear here is a very big amount of fear. This is a fear uh, motivated kind of, uh, you know, belief here that whatever you say will happen. So you just watch your mouth right and so yeah can you speak something negative and and something here that that kind of builds into this teaching is the idea that job experienced his hardships and his powers or sorry his his sufferings because he had used negative confession other people also teach that he was worrying and by fear and worry he opened the door for the devil but let's stop here and just look at the idea here that in job chapter one he he went to sacrifice and and he did that because he says uh you know that he said to himself that perhaps my sons have sinned you know and uh, so People teach here that Job was speaking a negative confession. He was speaking something uh, negative. And that's also what opened the door for the devil to attack him. Well, is that what, you know, the Bible says? If you have the filter again, if you have these glasses of the Word of Faith worldview on, you can read that meaning into the text. And it somehow can give a reason why Job suffered. Because all of us are struggling with that. Why did God allow that, right? And let me tell you, the book of Job never answers that question. It never does. Uh, th- that's part of the book of Job, is that it doesn't give a rational answer to exactly why Job went through his sufferings. But let's just start in chapter, just like stop and start and stop in chapter one, where we're looking at this. And later on, of course, uh, the, we have that dialogue between Satan and God. And notice here that God calls Job upright and righteous. Yeah. So there is no one point ever where Job is blamed for speaking a negative confession. There is nowhere in the book of Job where Job's, uh, if it would have been a negative confession, that it would, that that is the reason why God, you know, allowed Satan to test Job. So, if you look for any reason why Satan attacked Job, it was because maybe he was very, very blessed and that he was, you know, maybe tempted to put his trust in his blessings and not the blesser or things like that. That might be fitting the story much better than the idea that he had spoken negative. Uh, that's not within the scriptures. But you say, well, that's exactly what happened. Well, then you're reading stuff into the Bible, which is not there. Uh, and I find it to be quite common when you come to some of these, you know, these charismatic beliefs is that they are based on things that are imported into the Bible. They're not pulled out of scripture. So unless somebody told you it was there, 
you would never have seen it.